what we're going to do now is we are going to look at some different traps that you can fall into with if statements and how to avoid them. So I'm going to ask you to take your uh, uh, program here and create a new method. We're going to call this method public static uh, all seven. And uh, this is going to return a Boolean. And all seven is going to return true if all the parameters are of value seven. Okay, so I'm going to give it three integers here, int A, int B, and int C. And I want you to write for me a little bit of code here that basically returns true. This method will return true if all three of these are seven. If any of them or all of them or any combination of them are not seven, it's going to return false. So the, this method tests to make sure that all three are seven. So I'd like you to write that now. And we're going to test this out, system out println. And we'll try one here, all seven. We'll try one where it is all seven. And then we'll try some other ones where they're not all sevens. So let's see here. Let's try this one. This one should return, should print, should print true. And these should all print false. So that works in math class, but it does not work in computer science. Because what's going to happen here, sir, is that this part will evaluate to true or false. And then you'll have C here, which is a number, and then a, a Boolean on the other side. So we have to basically test each one independently so to see if it's the equal to seven. How do I do that, sir? The easier way would just be this way. And if this is the case, what do we return, Mr. Mason? And what do we return otherwise? OK. So this is, you agree, I think, one way to do this, right? Let's run this program here, and we should get a true and then three falses. And you can see that it worked fine. I'm going to show you another way to write this now, which may not occur to you right away. I'm going to write it like this. And what I want to know is, will this work? It will work. Let's try it out. And you can see this also works. Now, I think you'll agree with me that the first way, the way that Mr. Mason and I did it together, is probably a shorter way to write it, and it's easier. But I want you to keep this idea in mind for some of the other problems we're going to look at today. So the next one we're going to do is I'm going to change this method name, and I'm going to call it bigger. And I'm going to pass it two parameters, and I'm going to say it returns the bigger one and i'm going to try i'd like you to write this bigger method for me now oh i'm sorry this should say int here and what do i put over here or i could do else or I, I don't even need the else i could put it there what do i return otherwise miss okay so that would be a good way to write it so let's run this and you can see that it works fine. Let me just put the code and the answers side by side so you can see. You can see that 8 is bigger, 10 is bigger, and here we have a tie, so it doesn't matter which one we print. So that's good. Now we're going to make this a little bit harder now, and I'm going to change the name of it to be biggest. And this time I'm going to add another one like that. So here it should print the 11, here it should print the 10, here it should print the 18. Of course, we need to change this code a little bit here. Okay, Mr. Uh, Manet, sir, do you have any uh, idea what to do for the starter for this code? And then we'd need a bunch more of these. Would you agree, sir? Okay, uh, so just give me one other. I, I, I'm not asking you to write the whole thing for me, just, but just give me one other one. Uh, Okay. And uh, how many of these things will we need? Uh, Is it just three? Let me put it to you another way. Let's say that instead of having this, I had this. 
Do you agree that your strategy for writing compound if statements is rapidly getting out of hand? You agree with that, right? So I need to give you another way to think about if statements besides what uh, Mr. Uh, Manet has suggested, because I'm guessing most of you are thinking that way because you're just starting to learn if statements now. But there's a much simpler way to solve this problem. And I'd like you to take a couple of minutes and see if you can figure out what it is by discussing it with your partners. Has anyone figured it out? When I started my lesson today, I said consider individual if statements instead of making them compound. So I'm going to give you a huge hint here. See if you can figure it out now from the hints how to write this code relatively easily to find out which one is the biggest. Can you see that by decoupling the if statements from one another and avoiding having compound clauses, I'm able to look at these things one at a time? Now, I need to explain to you something about this, this weird thing why you were having such a mental block here. If I had given you five boxes with numbers in them and I asked you which one was the largest one, you would open the first box, make a mental note of what the largest number was so far. Then you open the second box and see if it's larger. Then you open the third box and see if it's larger and the fourth one and see if it's larger. You would not open up all the boxes simultaneously and try to look at them and try and figure it out. But for some reason, when you try to do it in computer science, that's the first thing your brain goes to is just because you've learned these and and or statements and if statements and you want to couple them all together. But you can see right here, it's much easier to solve the problem if you look at the items one at a time and keep running track of which one is your answer so far. So don't forget this strategy when you're looking at uh, ways to solve problems on the AP exam for the FRQ or in real life for whatever.